a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 68, making a new blast nozzle, using a rotary table to mill the end of it and test running the engine to see what happens. This is the old blast nozzle that I modified in an earlier episode, but the problem is the hexagon part of it is far too big and it really gets in the way of the other hexagon union nut that holds the steam pipe in place. At first I thought it would be a very quick, simple and easy job to turn down the hexagon part so that the sharp pointy bits didn't stick out because they were removed. A minor brainwave. I do like jobs that don't take a lot of time because it's the one thing that we're all running out of very fast. What was left of the hexagon still fouled the other one, so I removed all of it, but then I thought, well, that's not a good idea. How am I going to fit it? The only thing to do was to make a complete new blast nozzle from scratch. Over now to the lathe, and I have a suitable piece of brass fitted in the three-jaw chuck. I'm facing across the end of it as usual, followed by using a centre drill, also as usual, to guide the main twist drill. I drilled the centre quite deeply, and then I followed it with this twist drill which is a suitable tapping size for half inch by 32 threads per inch and it's two imperial sizes down from half an inch. In this clip I'm threading the hole using a half inch by 32 tap. After which I parted off a suitable length of this bar to make the blast pipe out of. The rings that you can see around the piece of brass where it's in the chuck jaws is where it spun round whilst I was tapping it. Once I parted off the piece that I wanted, I fitted it back in the chuck, and here I'm using a centre drill. This is the top of the blast pipe, and I'm drilling it quite deeply because I need a converging and diverging cone inside the blast pipe. The next part of the job involves the use of this rotary table. This is a cheap rotary table that I bought from RDG Tools. I have a much better one, but it doesn't swivel like this one does. And as my personality prohibits me from messing about with things for the sake of it, just by undoing two allen bolts, I can swivel this and it lays on its side. And after simply retightening the two allen bolts, it's ready for use. Here's the embryo of the blast pipe in the chuck. And I'm going to mill six flats on the end of it so it looks like a nut. I really did think this was a good idea, and much better in my opinion than the arrangement shown on the drawing. First of all, I reset the rotary table to zero. Well, in this clip, almost zero. This is just for the video. A circle is divided into 360 degrees, and as I want to mill six flats on the piece of brass, I'm using 0, 60, 120, 180, 240 and 300 degrees. Just out of interest, as a while back I made a video about how to use a rotary table in its simplest possible form. I typed a simple sentence into Google. What are the number of degrees required to cut six flats on a piece of bar? I read a lot of text. I watched three videos, and in the end, I had to go and lie down. When I was at school, most of the maths lessons started by the teacher saying, OK, everybody be quiet, Appleton, get out into the corridor. That's not a joke, it was every lesson. I have a feeling that the maths teacher didn't like me very much. He even put sarcastic comments on my school report like, out of his depth and sinking, and the best one, further critical comment would be futile. Happy days. Time now to fit the blast nozzle and test the engine to see what difference it makes by it having a blast nozzle. It has a different sound. The sound is sort of, well, more compressed and it's a tighter sound. The diameter of this blast nozzle, in between the two tapered parts each side of it, is a quarter of an inch. And it seems to work better until the engine slows down then it starts to make a squeaking noise. To rule out any mechanical squeaking, I oiled every moving part of the engine, including the axle boxes. Initially, yes, it does sound a lot better than it did without the blast nozzle. Because the blast nozzle is smaller, there is some back pressure in the system. But once again, when the engine slows down, it starts to squeak or whistle. This is a real puzzle. It doesn't whistle without the blast nozzle, but it whistles when it's fitted with the blast nozzle. But hang on a minute, I have missed one oiling point. I'd better oil the water pump ram. Now is a good time to see whether the drain cocks work. The lubricator's working, so there's oil going into the cylinders. 
and as you can see there's oil coming out of the drain cocks when I open them and the whistle's still there is this a mechanical squeak or is it something to do with the blast nozzle with the brass hexagon milled on top of the blast nozzle all I have to do is put a socket down the chimney to remove it time for a run without the blast nozzle You should be able to hear that it's not running quite as well as it does when it has a blast nozzle. The back pressure helps to cushion the moving components in the cylinder. But also with the blast nozzle removed, there's no longer that whistling noise. So the culprit would appear to be the blast nozzle. Just to confirm that the cylinders are getting plenty of lubrication, here's a shot of the mechanical lubricator and it's working very well. I've refitted the blast nozzle, have a listen now. Yes, it's definitely an acoustic problem. I fitted a piece of tube down over the end of the blast nozzle and ran the engine again. And this time it squeaked at high speed, but not at low speed. In the 1980s, I had a similar problem. This was a 7.25 inch gauge Stania Black 5, and when it was new, this also squeaked when it ran on the track. I slowed down the video to lower the frequency. Have a listen. How did I stop this squeak? It was really horrible. I just changed the brand of steam oil I was using. On the simplex, I'm not currently going to do anything about this noise. The first thing I'm going to do is steam it on the bench using a gas burner. It may perform very differently when being run on steam than it does on compressed air. But for the moment, I'm going to leave you with this close-up shot of the interesting part of the valve gear and leave it running to the end of the video. I'd just like to say, as I always do, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.